Excellency, Association Krishna, Minister of External Affairs, His Excellency, Dhan Sharma, Minister of Commerce and Industry, the Honorable Ministers for the Diaspora Countries, Excellency, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, a very good afternoon. India being the largest democratic country in the world, as well as a global financial crisis, by sustaining a global demand from its 1.2 trillion US dollars economy, as well as playing an important role in helping the world recover from the current meltdown. I must take this opportunity to congratulate the Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, the architect of modern India for liberating and reforming into the in order to position India on the path of globalization to propel its current economic growth, which will grow at the pace of 7 to 8 percent. Under his magnanimous leadership, India stands to shape and develop a new global economy, economic order. As the world economic power pendulum is swinging towards the east, and India's domestic market is of interest to various global manufacturing nations. The question today is how the mega powerhouse India can propel prosperity among its 25 billion diaspora. There are at least six areas of interest and concern that would require wealth creation and distribution, but I will be brief in that. The first one is the venture capital. It was estimated that, that total of U.S. $25 billion to $30 billion of remittance is made into India by the diasporas and other citizens who work in foreign soil. For this, a prosperous India could reciprocate the diasporas goodwill by elevating various types of venture capital opportunities by matching every dollar remitted to India with a rupee and its fund can be then managed by either some form of designated authorities or fund managers. Diasporas could then propose both short-term as well as long-term strategic projects that would benefit both the diaspora and the Indian citizens. The second subject is India Incorporated Consortiums as an investment arm for diaspora. India being the fastest growing economy in the world, needs no further introduction towards its economic strength and potential. With foreign investment exceeding almost 45 billion in recent years, India's limitless amount of reserves and resources to invest in other countries. It is our opinion that India is already prepared to establish collaboration between the public private sector in the shape of India Incorporated Consortiums, which could invest in other countries with sizable diaspora. And the third one, starting the global tertiary education through diaspora. Ladies and gentlemen, for the number of students pursuing education, the first tertiary education globally, has also skyrocketed over the past 37 years, growing fivefold from the modest figure of 28.6 million in 1970 to 150 million in 2009. The time is right for India to become an export nation for tertiary education, especially in the Asia Pacific Rim. India's top notch universities and business institutes should start to expand their wings into global markets with the assistance of diaspora. The diaspora could assist by facilitating investment recruitment and marketing source of the key programs where India starts to consolidate its education supremacy in these new countries and markets. The fourth one is creating is inclusive growth and life with life India's recent development programs were centered on the theme of towards a faster and more inclusive growth. And the role of diaspora must also be incorporated to accelerate sex development programs 
in order to eradicate the disparity between the rich and the poor. While in India, while India is committed to the plan, develop and provide world-class infrastructure, especially in relation to their roads and railway facilities. Diasporas who are, who are well equipped with knowledge, skills and expertise should be included in order to ensure inclusiveness. India should allocate 3 to 5 percent of its annual development budget for the diaspora's involvement and participation. Fifth one is closing the gap between social and structural digital divide. India currently has a rural tele density of 20 percent and the, if the urban area enjoy close to 100% penetration rate. India expects to deploy various forms of quantum leap strategies and expect to connect almost 2.5 lakh villages with broadband by the end of year 2012. The Indian diaspora today come from various landscapes consisting of world-class economies and technology frontier. Providing photo-based strategic commercial information, connectivity, and content with decision-making tools could easily be incorporated into the next generation broadband spectrum. Number six, the green era of product and services. The phenomenon of green initiative in the form of commercial products and services are gaining momentum globally. Institutions, including financial institutions, are now aligning themselves with green products such as green mortgage, green commercial building loans, green car loan, and green project finance, which amongst others are some of the phenomena offers that will be engaged with customers over the next couple of years. These are the areas of interest of India which, like other countries, is a stakeholder to the global warming and greenhouse emission challenges. The diasporas have plenty of experience and must be engaged proactively through green roundtable discussions in order to develop strategies and proactive measures simply to protect the next coming generation. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, the success of Indian diaspora is one way or another depend on the prosperity of India. While India continues to break more world records in its economic performance under the highly commendable leadership of Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, diasporas inevitably could play a vital role in assisting and generating a new source of income for India. Let's prosper together as one success leads to another, while cooperation, collaboration, and coordination between India and its diaspora will position India as the biggest economy in the world by 2050.